Okay, so let's see an example of a strongly continuous semigroup, okay? Okay, so we have, well, let's say that x is uh, infinity or n, okay? Um, which is the closure of the Schwartz space, okay? We will use functions in Schwartz space, although this can be modified. If uh, you uh, recall the heat equation, ddt ut, this can be written as equal to Laplacian ut. And well, the initial condition u0, u0, and we will say that this is in the Schwartz space. This can be modified if you look it up in other uh, sources. You will see that sometimes u0 is in sub f h2 of a um, omega z intersection h1 0, the closure of h1. Okay, but uh, in this case, we will just uh, manage with uh, u0 in the short space where we can um, manipulate uh, functions with uh, Fourier transform with, with any problem. Okay, so we define the um, heat kernel function as, let's say, gtx. As, uh, well, you can also say g of x and t equal to 1 over 4 pi t n over 2 e to the minus x absolute value squared over 40 okay and one can define uh, the semigroup t t u naught as the convolution of GT with uh, U naught, okay, and this it is to make the integral in our n, okay, this n is the dimension of R, and uh, so this will be G of x minus y t U naught y dy, okay, the classical convolution, okay. So one can check that this semigroup and TT of U naught is the solution of uh, the homogeneous uh, heat equation. Okay. One can also prove a contraction property that GT x dx is equal to one. Okay. Okay. So so let's see. Um, if this is a semigroup, okay, okay. So recall Fourier transform. If we have a U in the Schwarz space, um, then the Fourier transform if U is defined as um, the integral of e minus x i u x dx and we will use two properties first the Fourier transform of a convolution is the multiplication of the Fourier transforms of u and b and well that the Fourier transform of uh, e minus by absolute value of x squared over m is equal to m to the n over 2 e to the minus m absolute value of psi squared over 4 pi so I'll recall the gtx is um, 1 over 4 pi 
t n over 2 e to the um, minus x squared 4t and so we will have for any t greater than 0 that the Fourier transform of gt is equal to m to the n over 2 um, oh, is uh, e to the minus t psi squared just knowing what gt is and what it is uh, this uh, property of well, not property but just what is the Fourier term for this function one can arrive to this so if uh, you use in the short space then we will have that uh, f for the transform of tt ts unit is equal to the for the transform of well convolution tt um, well, instead of uh, dt, I will put um, gt, okay? Here we've been using gt as dt, so it's, it's the same. So, gt, convolution, um, gs, convolution, Unit, okay. This will be equal to Fourier transform of GT, and now yes, we are using this property first. What we did before is just the definition of TT of U naught. That is that the convolution of GT will use U naught. Okay, so we just separate as dt with all this as a function and then this by itself as a semi group with function and now yes we use the first property so this will be f of gt f of gs and for the transform of u naught this will be equal to well we get here what is the if we transform of f g t f g s so we just plug in that that means e to the minus t psi squared e to the minus s psi squared and well this remains the same f of unit we can join these two in one e to the minus t plus s psi squared if you not and so one can say that this is g of t plus s so here we have that uh, taking Fourier again is f of g of t plus s and um, let's uh, take another step we will have the multiplication that becomes a, a convolution okay. and if we go back to the first notation this will be f if we hit some form of t of t plus s unit Okay, so we finally got that f of um, Fourier transform of tt ts unit is equal to the Fourier transform of t of t plus s 
you know, and if you want to take inverse Fourier transform, we'll have the relation T S um, T T T S equal to T of T plus S holds in draw space and next C infinity in our case. Let's see a sketch of how to prove that TT is strongly continuous. Well, one should prove that TT u naught minus u naught norm that this is uh, the limit goes to zero. This will be equal to one over four pi t this is a four n over two um integral e x minus y this is a convolution over four t u naught y minus u naught x okay dx and the key of all this is to make a change of variables okay just naming the exponent as z okay so this will stay as uh, minus z squared and that will absorb the t here so that is the trick one will have here u of x minus 4 square root of t z minus u x d z and um, the natural bound to put inside the integral will give us um, the final bound so this will be integral of minus z squared u x minus 4 t z u x t z and using dominant convergence theorem one can prove that goes to zero when t goes to zero here is a 4 t the downside okay here in this and minus. So this will go to zero. So TT is strongly continuous. Okay, so finally let's prove that the depletion is a degenerator. So that is by taking the limit when t goes to zero of one over t of uh, TT u minus u. Let's use for, to take this limit that the Fourier transform on F of dt u this is e minus t psi squared minus one f u and if you could derive this you will have psi squared minus okay and f u if we then take the limit this will disappear okay so using that we will have and taking inverse Fourier transform to get back to the original space we will have that this limit is in the Fourier um, transform of size squared um, f of u okay okay so the anti transform of this is telling us that a u is the relation of u. This is the transform of the relation. So, by this theorem, you know that if a is a generator of a series of Europe, then t a is dense, and a is a close operator. So a restricted to the Schwarz space is the relation. This is dense in x, and so the closure of the relation will be. Um, will be the generator in x in the whole space. So the generator of TTE in the x is the Laplacian operator.